Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create stylized visuals from your renders in Twinmotion. In this video I'm going to look at how you can take a render you've created in Twinmotion and using post-production techniques turn it into a more stylized visual. Now often with your kind of twin motion renders they look very kind of rendered quite CGI-esque. They're always quite crisp and the graphics are quite sharp and for some people that is a kind of style that they are going for but for others you might want to kind of turn it into something a little bit more stylized and a bit more kind of cartoony rather than a very realistic looking image. Now to do this I'm going to make use of Twinmotion's layer IDs and also its clay rendering techniques and we're going to combine these together in Photoshop to create a more stylized image. Now before we start all I'm going to do is I'm just going to group all my objects into layers. Now I did this previously in Rhino before I imported it in and then I put all my kind of additional trees and my rocks and other things in a kind of folder in my sort of scene over on the right hand side here. What we can do once we've done that is we can actually select a folder and go down to this little layer ID option and if you tick enabled and basically give each of these kind of different layers a different number from 1 to 5 when you render out the image it will also render out a separate layer mask for you that we can use to essentially isolate these objects, the trees, the rocks, the building in Photoshop when we go to edit that image. Now I've done a separate video looking more in depth into these layer IDs but for the purpose of this video all you need to do is make sure you're kind of grouped in folders and you have a separate layer ID for each of your main objects. So for my trees I'm on number two, rocks on number one, we've got my kind of water over here which is on number three, my walls and my building number four and then terrain is number five. For the sky you don't actually need to give it a layer ID because you can automatically pull that sky layer out as well when we render the image. Now we're going to actually render this image twice, once with the kind of colour and all of our layer IDs and the separate one as a clay render. So for the first one just make sure you've got your kind of image saved out here just by clicking on the plus tab if you haven't already or kind of using one of your preset up views that you're using. Then just to get under the media option we're just going to go over to image and just check what our resolution is usually for still images and especially when you're kind of editing something like this I try and go for the 4k size as a minimum um, that way you've got a lot of pixels to work with it allows you to crop in a little bit later so you slightly higher resolution is always useful um, and what we're also going to do is when we go to the export function select our image just making sure that our image is selected there we've got a jpeg format here i'm going to make sure i tick on all of my render layers so just under the details if you can't see that you can open it there and we're just going to tick sky and layers one to five this will essentially export out all of these layers as masks as we can see here and we can then use those when we go to edit our image later so once you've done that we're just going to scroll down and we're going to hit that start export choose a folder and start exporting that image and we're just going to let that one export and then we're going to export it again also as a clay render. Now that image is finished exporting you can see in my folder here we have the kind of color version and then we have our black and white masks here which are created from our layer IDs and these will be really helpful when we come to edit the image. Now for the second part of the rendering I'm going to go back to my image and select it in my kind of media option here and we're going to go over to the FX option down here and we we'll scroll down and we're going to click on clay render and we're going to just turn that on. Now by default it might be set to a color I'm just going to set mine to white doesn't actually have to be perfectly white you can always do that just by typing in 255 on each of these and that will set it to a kind of perfect white but it doesn't matter so much all that we need is it to be very contrasty so we've got a kind of white on one tone and a dark on the other and essentially this is going to be our shadow layer which we're going to use to create a sort of stylized shadow look to our image under that fx kind of clay render option we also have in these details you've got translucency and reflection i found if you play with these too much especially lowering the translucency down or too high it makes the render time really really long so I usually keep these about the same and I turn on the bump because it adds in a little bit more detail which can be good for our image as well. Once we've done that we're then again just going to go to export. I can take out the layers this time because we don't need it for this we've already rendered them out previously. Making sure I'm in the exact same view that I haven't twisted the view slightly because I'm going to need to overlay these again and then again we're just going to go down and hit start export and export that out and let that export there as well. 
Once that's finished exporting, you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like this image here, which is our kind of black and white um, clay render of our view. So we've got the clay render, we've got the color, and then we've got all of our layers here as well. Usually I put them all in one folder like this because it makes it a bit easier when bringing these into Photoshop. So now we're going to start the editing process. I'm going to open up Photoshop here and to bring all of these images in, I'm going to go to File, Scripts and Load Files into Stack. I'm going to hit Browse and we're just going to locate all of those images there and I'm just going to select them all and hit OK and then hit OK again. And this is just going to load them into our scene as a kind of series of layers, as you can see here. Now what we can do once these have loaded in is we can now start to use these layers to create my more stylized image. You can see I've got my color one on top, I've got my kind of shadows, and then I've got each of these layers here below. Now to begin with, what we're going to do is I'm going to create six folders, one for each of my masks I've got here. And I'm just going to make those on top of my image, like so. Then in turn, I'm just going to go from my sky upwards we're going to select the sky image, hold the Alt key down and click on this little eye symbol here. This will isolate that image and just show that one layer for us. With that isolated, I'm then going to go to channels, select the RGB channel and hold the control key, which will open up this little selection option and click on the small black and white image next to that RGB icon. This will essentially select the white area of that image and kind of create it as a selection for us. If we then go back to the layers, I'm going to hold down the Alt key again and click on the eye to unhide that group. And then we're just going to select the first group. We're going to call it Sky. And I'm just going to drop that layer mask in there just by clicking on the layer mask option. We're now going to repeat that process for each of these five layers. So I'm going to just sort of fast forward the video in this instance while I add each of these kind of masks onto my groups, which will then allow me to easily start to kind of start stylizing this image. So now we've made a different folder for each of those particular masks. I can now start kind of adding colors, adding other effects into these folders to start to create my image. And this is how we create that sort of more stylized effect. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna make a brand new layer on top of my base image, and I'm gonna just give a base color behind all of my layers. And we're gonna use a sky color for this. So I'm just holding down the Alt key there, picking a color in the sky. I've clicked on my paint bucket tool there. I'm going to just make sure that that kind of lighter blue is selected and we'll just paste that in as our kind of background color. And we're going to hide that now because we'll come back to it later. Now for the terrain, I'm just going to pick a color from my terrain image, just selecting that base image again. And let's pick one of these greens. And again, we'll make a new layer and just drop it in the terrain. Make sure we're using that green that we've got. And all I'm going to do is just go through each of these layers and pick a color from my model that we're going to use as the color for each of these. And what this will do is it will essentially allow us to create this kind of block color version of our image. For the water, again, let's pick one of these blues down here, flip it around, make a new layer, paste something in the water and you'll see as I do this we're starting to kind of color in the image I'm essentially just using colors I'm getting from the base image we can always tweak those we can always go back and change them if you want to as well I'm going to try and find a nice green from these trees maybe something a little bit brighter here and sometimes you might find you can kind of get it quite quickly other times you might need to play around find different color tones for each of these things but essentially what you're going for is once you've picked a color from each of these and we'll just do the rocks here as the sort of last one and let's take a kind of slightly lighter let's go somewhere here slightly lighter kind of cream tone for those like so you'll end up with an image that looks a little bit like this and we're going to turn on that background color again as well where we're going to have a nice kind of block color image based upon the original colors of our visual. Now it might be that you're quite happy with this and this was sort of the result you're looking for and that you've actually just wanted a sort of block color version of your original render. But as a final technique, we're gonna now use that clay 
image here, which I'm just going to bring right to the top. And we're going to use this to basically add shadows on top of the rest of our image. Now to do this, what we're going to do is just go into our adjustment layers. We're going to add a black and white to this, and we're also going to add a levels. If we hold the Alt key on our keyboard and hover in between these two layers, the image and the black and white, we can essentially clip these adjustments directly to that layer. And what this means is any of these adjustments I do will only be affecting that layer below and they won't affect any other layers in my stack. Now all I'm trying to do here is just go for a really high contrasting image. We want to make the shadows really dark and the light areas really white. You'll find if you do it too much it will sort of fade in like this, so somewhere in between there is what I want to go for. Once we've got that, I'm then just going to select that image there. We're going to go up to edit here, we're going to go copy merged, like so. And then we're just going to go edit and paste, and paste it as a new layer. And then I'm just going to hide those previous ones. Once we've got that pasted, I'm then essentially going to go up to my filter options here, go to filter gallery, and we're going to use the cutout filter to make a more sort of stylized version of this. So this allows us to basically slightly abstract this image. If you up the number of levels, you'll see it becomes a bit more kind of like you're dialing in between the two colors. I actually like it quite low, putting it to like a level of two. Don't want the simplicity too high, so I'm going to keep it quite sharp. And the fidelity doesn't change things too much, so I'll leave that on a two and hit OK there. And there you can see it's essentially sort of stripped out the color and we've just got this sort of black and mid-gray tone there for our image. As a final touch, we are basically going to take that layer, set it to a multiply mode on there, and then just lower that fill color there. And now you can see it's essentially adding that shadow up and over the top of our image. Now you can see it's also adding a shadow on the sky. So what we can actually do is just hover over that sky mask here. I'm just going to hold the Alt key and click and drag that mask up to the top. At the moment, it's just kind of masking the sky. So to invert it, I'm just going to hit Control I on my keyboard and that will hide this shadow from appearing on the sky. So it's only working on the rest of the objects. And we can play around with the fill color until we get that looking nice. Now we've pretty much got to a kind of nice end where we've got a slightly more stylized version of our image. It's kind of more cartoony with a nice sort of shadow on, but it's very flat in how it's looking. As a kind of final twist, you can always take the original image here. I'm just going to hold the Alt key and drag it to make a copy of it. And we'll just drop it back on top. And then if you just reduce the opacity, you can basically just layer it up lightly. And that way you get a little bit of this reflection in the water and you can do it more or less depending on how you want to blend the two of these together. So that was just a quick video tutorial on how you take an image from Twinmotion and start to turn it into something more stylized. You can use this for lots of different visual effects um, and with these folders as well once you've made them the great thing about it is you can always go in you can add a hue saturation, you can tweak the colors of things if you wanted it to be slightly different colors or maybe you wanted to actually make it one single tone of color, you can do that as well. So it's a very versatile way of going in and customizing each of these layers to get the particular image look that you're looking for. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on creating renderings, visuals or drawings in Rhino or Twinmotion, please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.